So many of you have been asking me, Greg, upload an overclocking guide. So I don't know specifically what CPUs you wanted me to overclock, but I do have two builds completely assembled and on hand currently. One of them is right there. That's the 4690K build from a few videos ago. And the other one's in my office. And we're just gonna use that one because it's already plugged in. I don't feel like moving things around. So 6600K it is. We're gonna overclock the 6600K to as high as we possibly can with a Kraken X31 cooler from NZXT. Let's see how high things go before sparks fly. No, I'm just kidding. We're not gonna go that far, but we're gonna go as high as the CPU will allow us while maintaining adequate temperatures. In this case, I'll say anything under 80C is acceptable and without going above like a crazy V core, maybe like 1.45, I don't know, we'll find out. So very quickly, a disclaimer on the overclocking guide that you're about to see. Remember that overclocking your CPU can pretty much void any warranty you have, even if it's a K CPU. So if you overclock your CPU too much, and I don't know, you throw too much voltage at it, something that you shouldn't be doing, uh, and you end up damaging your CPU or your motherboard or your graphics card or anything else that's connected directly to your processor, those things aren't going to be covered by any warranty because you pretty much voided it yourself when you decided to throw 1.9 volts of vCore at your CPU. So keep those things in mind. I have to say that up front because I could, I, yeah, I'm not liable for any of that stuff, but I don't even want people to assume the fact that I am liable because I'm not. Don't do anything weird to your processor, yo. Okay, so a quick, quick explanation of overclocking. All we're gonna be doing in this video is, is tampering with two separate things, okay? One is the multiplier and one is the V-Core. You can't have one without the other. So you can't have a super high multiplier, which is basically a number times your base clock frequency, which is typically 100 megahertz. So in our case, 46 times 100 megahertz is 4.6 gigahertz, which is what our i5-6600K is currently at. And if I decided to increase that multiplier to 48, 48 times 100 is 4.8 gigahertz. So that's how the multiplier works. It's just a number that is multiplied by your base clock frequency, and that gives you your CPU frequency overall. But the other side of this equation is the V-Core, and the V-Core is the amount of voltage that is supplied directly to the processor. Not enough voltage, and your CPU won't even turn on. It's a bit like not having gasoline in a car if you catch my drift. But having too much voltage can result in an extremely hot processor and probably a processor with an extremely short lifespan. So that's why I said what I said up front in the disclaimer, these kinds of things can reduce the longevity of your processor and uh, just may cause your system to all together just poop out on you. So things, things get pretty risky when it comes to overclocking uh, if you don't know what you're doing. And that's why I'm gonna make this video This hopefully should alleviate some of your concerns. So let's get right to it. So the first thing we're going to do is shut down our computer. Well, not shut it down, we're gonna restart it. And we're going to click delete in our case. Maybe it's F2 for you, maybe it's something like F12. I don't know. It's gonna be the button that forces your computer into its BIOS. Refer to your motherboard's manual if you don't know what button that is. Okay, we're gonna go right here to overclock. And then, all right, so remember what I was talking about with your multiplier and your V-Core. Well, this right here is our multiplier. So this number times a base clock frequency of 100 yields the gigahertz, well, the, the frequency of your CPU, so in our case, 4.6 gigahertz, 46 times 100. The other factor in this particular overclocking guide will be the core voltage. This is your V-Core. may not always be called V-Core. It may be called core voltage or something else. Just make sure that you know which one you're tampering with. Make sure that you're confident that this one is the V-Core. But obviously, if I plan on going any higher than 46 on my multiplier, I am going to need more voltage. In fact, if I just left this, um, excuse me, if I just left my voltage at 1.32 and turn this to say 48, my computer would crash instantly. It wouldn't even boot in the operating system. But we're gonna go ahead and try 48. So 4.8 gigahertz, and we're gonna set our V-Core, let's say one point, this is gonna be tough here, 1.38. Let's do 1.38. And okay, so we have booted successfully into our OS. We are currently at 4.8 gigahertz, and I will confirm that with good old hardware monitor right here. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom into the middle. Sorry, this is so unprofessional-ish. I have one camera and one screen and one one body, so that's kind of what I'm stuck at right now. So we're at 4.8 gigahertz. That's what it's showing right here, and our temperatures are looking phenomenal, uh, at least at idle. 
Now we're going to give our CPU a little stress test. I always like to do this because this will confirm if our CPU is actually stable. Um, now you could use something like Ida64 or even Prime95 if you're hardcore, but uh, Cinebench will do just fine for right now. So we're going to run this test and we're going to observe our CPU temperatures at the same time. I know this is very difficult for you guys to see um, because this is so far zoomed out. I don't want to run the screen recorder because, well, that's going to make things a bit worse. Okay, folks, so we have our CPU usage right here, so you want to keep track of that. These will all jump up to 100 when I finally run Cinebench. And then these are our temperatures, currently all around 20C, except for the package, which is closer to 30C. Those are still very good idle temperatures. Keep in mind, we're only cooling this with a Kraken X31, so this is a single... Uh, oh, spyware, I oh, don't know. Um, <clears throat> this is only being cooled with an X31 uh, Kraken from NZXT. It's only a 120 millimeter radiator, and we're still getting these very low temperatures at idle with a 4.8 gigahertz overclock. So, let's go ahead and run <laughs> Cinnamon R15, and let's cross our fingers and hope that our computer does not crash in the process. Oh, it did, okay. So that is what it looks like when you when you don't have enough voltage. That is what happens. It may say something like watchdogs, it may say something else kind of weird. But for the most part, if you are overclocking, you need a blue screen of death randomly at any point when your CPU is under uh, quite a bit of stress. That is likely what is going on. You do not have enough voltage being supplied to your processor. So it's actually not very difficult to, to fix. Um, all we have to do is just increase our vCore. So go back into overclock and I don't know why that's red. It may be saying that's too high. I don't know why the effective is lower. That's a little strange. Um, let's do 1.4. Getting pretty high. All right, folks. This is it's getting a little uncomfortable now. Okay, now we're into operating system should be more stable than it was uh, in the previous run just because we do have more voltage being supplied but at the same time our temperatures could be quite a bit higher uh, these things tend to exponentially increase once you pass a certain threshold I think we're right on the verge of doing that with this processor um, temps are still pretty good uh, we're still mid mid 20s on most of our cores and still right under 30 C for our package nope oh, it's gonna crash Yep, <laughs> it froze. Here comes the blue screen, everyone, and the blue screen. There it is. There it is. Clock watchdog timeout. So our CPU still does not have enough voltage to operate at 4.8 gigahertz. You guys see how intense this is. This is this is. We've hit a wall here. 4.8 gigahertz is just that's just too high for most of these processors. Let's see what we can do here. MSI is telling us, ooh, you're in red. 1.4 is just too high. Well, I don't care. Let's try 1.42. Like I said, 1.45 is as high as I'm going. So, that is it. And, yep, telling us 1.4 to 1.42. Let's go ahead and reset. I'm gonna check our temperatures once again. Things are definitely a bit higher. So, our idles are just under 30C. Our package every now and then is jumping up to about 40C. Yeah, so we're still pretty good considering the amount of voltage we are currently supplying to the processor. Actually not bad. This thing has a, a very high heat tolerance. All right, looks good. Temperatures are still under 50C, under full load. But can it pass the whole test? That is the question. Hmm. And we are at 777 C CB. Yeah, I said CP. I've been saying CP in the past couple of videos. CB is what I meant. So we're at 777 CB currently. And our max temperature <laughs> in all of our cores, things never got above 51 C. And our package also never got above 51 C. That is very, very impressive. I am very impressed with this processor and this cooler. Uh, we, we got very lucky very lucky with this chip here. So I'm going to save that score because that's a pretty darn good score. And we're going to run one more test. We're going to run Geekbench because Geekbench isn't going to absolutely murder our CPU, but it's going to put it under some stress as well. 
likely as much as some of our games will. All right, we finished Geekbench in 50 seconds flat. And our single core score is 4,896. That is pretty awesome. That's a very high single core score. And our multi-core score is 15,686, which is up there with the lower end i7s. So not bad at all. That's a, that's a very good score. That is a very good score. Uh, but our single core score, I think, is even more noteworthy. That's, that's almost 5,000. I don't think there's a single processor that's sold to consumers at this point that gets anywhere near that. So 4896 is very good. Very, very good for our little i5-6600K here. Uh, I'm going to go to 1.45. Whoa, there we go. Yeah, 1.45 volts. That's freaking high, guys. That's really high. Oh, boy. <clears throat> and we're just going to go to 49 first. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Uh, v core to 1.45 and multiplier to 449. Okay. Uh, here we go. I would be surprised if this even booted. 4.9 is super, super high. That's, that's very high for a 120 millimeter radiator and a 6600K, that's for sure. All right. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna get a crash because, uh, yeah, we're definitely gonna get a crash. Yep, there we go, blue screen. Guys, that's about it. I'm not going any higher than that. I don't feel comfortable pushing this to 1.5 volts. It's definitely not rated to, uh, to receive that much of a, a voltage increase. I'm not gonna go that high. I'm going to keep it uh, for the sake of, I don't know, just being a, a good role model. I'm gonna keep it at 4.8 gigahertz, but I am going to up the voltage just a bit. So we're gonna go to 48. Yep. And I'm going to keep the V-Core, we'll do 1.44. And that's where it's going to stay, guys. I think that 1.44 is, is going to be just fine. And our temperatures are relatively low, so even if it's not as low as it could be, 1.44 should be just fine. So there you have it, folks. 4.8 gigahertz with a V-Core of 1.4, eh, 3 we'll say. It was stable-ish at 1.42, but I have a feeling that it would probably blue screen on me if I decided to run Prime 95 or 864 or even game very intensely, so 1.43 is where I'm gonna keep it at. I will keep you updated if I have to raise that voltage any higher, but for now, we'll say that 1.43 is pretty stable. Let me know what you're sporting in your rig. If you currently have an overclocked CPU, be sure to list that CPU's name, frequency, V-Core, and corresponding cooler in the comments below. We would all be very curious to know what you're currently sporting and what you're currently sporting it at, you know, frequency-wise. So yeah, do that for us. And then be sure to like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. I know this was a little less professional than what the video content usually is on this channel, but that's the process that I go through when I overclock. And I wanted to show you guys that it's really that simple. All I do is mess with the, the multiplier and the V-Core. That's really it. There are other things you could change, like your PCI lane frequencies and things like that, but I don't mess with any of that. Uh, th this process here is very simple. Anybody with the proper hardware could do it. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.